right, an 18-game winner with the Cardinals, who well could walk off with Cy Young hardware come the end of the season. Arroyo has been nothing short of brilliant, and today Jeff Brantley trying to win number 14. It would really be great to see him win back-to-back games to end the year with 15 victories on the season. I'm right there with you, Marty, and I, I really believe that if Bronson Arroyo continues in the next two starts to pitch the way he has over the second half of the season, uh, not only will he win those next two starts, but he'll finish the season with a ERA under four. And coming from where he came from earlier in the season, even though he had a lot of wins early, his ERA was really high. And he's worked very hard to get that ERA down. He's worked hard to continue to go out and put together now 11, hoping for 12 consecutive quality starts today the big issue is can the Reds put the same kind of numbers on the board that they did in the last two nights off of Charlie Morton and speaking of Charlie Morton we've seen the best and the worst of Charlie Morton when he beat the Reds back on the 21st of August and then on September the 1st in a Reds 11 to 5 win he was just the opposite pitcher well the the big thing for Morton is keeping the ball down in the strike zone he's a sinker ball pitcher both sinking the ball into right-handers and then breaking the ball away from them. Very very similar to a guy that you would see that just starts the ball in the middle of the plate. It sinks one way, it cuts the other, but the, the, the whole focus for Morton is keeping the ball down. Some starts he's done that and done very well, and there's been others where he's been up around mid-thigh and he has been absolutely hammered. Well, the battery will get together, Jeremio and Morton, and before the leadoff batter, Willie Tavera steps in. Tavares batting 238 with a home run, 15 RBIs. The first time he has been in the lineup since the 18th of August against the San Francisco Giants. Suffered a strained right quad and has been out of action since then. He'll be the leadoff batter. Our first pitch brought to you by Belterra Casino Resort and Spa, where the legendary Regis Philbin performs his variety show on October 2nd. For tickets, visit BelterraCasino.com. So here's Tavares, right-hand batter, in off the grass by a step at third is Andy LaRoche. Pretty much the same for first baseman Garrett Jones. And Charlie Morton into the windup and onto the plate, and it's taken for a strike, and this game is underway. Along with the corner infielders, Delwyn Young at second, Luis Cruz at short, the outfield of Andrew McCutcheon in center to his right and left, Lastings Millage, and to his left and right, is Brandon Moss and a hard foul into the Reds' dugout. And Tavares in a hole very quickly, no balls and two strikes. Jaramillo behind the plate, waiting on deck is Drew Sutton to be followed by Joey Votto. Morton overall 4-8, and making his 17th start, a former property of the Atlanta Braves. Here's a liner foul well back into the seats behind the first base dugout. Willie obviously showing some of the rustiness of being away as long as he has. He is way late on that swing on the pitches from Charlie Morton. Very similar to uh, Ramon Hernandez the other night, but Hernandez made some quick adjustments Mm -hmm. and got a couple of base hits. Back comes the right-hander, and this one is hit foul down the right field line. Count holding it, no balls and two strikes. Our plate umpire is Todd Tishner at first, James Hoy. The crew chief is at second, Tim Cheetah over at third base, Bob Davidson. Now Morton stepped on the pitching rubber, now turns and goes back behind the mound and now comes back on top again. Defense pretty much playing Tavares as an opposite field hitter the way he's been swinging the bat. And this one, a breaking ball down. The count's one ball, two strikes. Remember, if you're driving around listening to our broadcast on your car or your truck radio, by all means, buckle up your seatbelt and make sure everyone else in your vehicle does the same. This message brought to you by the Ohio Department of Public Safety. What's holding you back? Here's a tapper toward third, charging and allowing it to go foul at the very last second. You can't get that close to a ball and back off and not make contact any closer than Andy LaRoche did. And he made a very wise decision. Willie would have beaten that out had he come up with a ball in front of the bag. But as he started to reach for it, all of a sudden he backed off and the ball went foul. If that ball is one more inch towards the field of play, Andy LaRoche is in big trouble because Tavares is going to be standing in second with a double. Yep. 
So the battle continues. A rather protracted leadoff at bat for Willie Tavares. And he strikes out swinging. So one away, and here's the shortstop, Drew Sutton. Paul Giannis getting the afternoon off. And Sutton getting, as I'm sure from his perspective, some much-needed at-bats today, opening at the shortstop position. In the limited time, he's had a chance to play a 207 batter with a home run and, and eight runs batted in. He has played second base, third base, shortstop, and even the outfield. He has really shown his versatility from a defensive standpoint, and he takes it low and outside, one ball and no strikes. Last couple of times we've seen him play, he's really swung the bat mm -hmm. well. Switch hitter batting left-handed, and the pitch is down. He gets ahead in the count 2-0, and oh, and Andy LaRoe staying in on the grass at third base. Morton sets for the 2-0 delivery, and it's on the way, and it's ball three. Joey Votto waiting on deck. You can really see the sinking action of Charlie Morton's fastball, but there's a very fine line in that release point to keep that ball in the strike zone or down in the dirt. And he walks Sutton on four straight pitches. So basically after throwing nothing but strikes to Willie Tavares, he ends up walking Drew Sutton on four straight, and that brings up the hot-hitting Joey Votto. I think that's... the last five games Votto is 12 for 21 over the last 13 batting 458 he shot his batting average up all the way to 314 after being down as low as 295 trying to keep it up here this afternoon the first pitch is taken low ball one that's really six consecutive pitches out of the strike zone because the ball that Tavares swung at was really up and away it was a ball Votto with 22 homers, 74 RBIs, trying to advance Sutton, and he rips one into deep right center field and caught. And Sutton is going to be dead meat at first base. Where in the heck was he going? Here's a throw into the first baseman who taps the bag to complete the double play. An absolute rocket, and that's exactly the way Brandon Moss was playing. Joey Votto, he turned completely around, found the ball, made the catch, and I have figured out that what Drew Sutton was trying to do. The Reds get nothing in the top of the first inning, and the Pirates coming up on the Cincinnati Bell Reds Radio Network. Bronson Arroyo going to work on leadoff batter Andrew McCutcheon here on the bottom of the first. And the breaking ball stays up and in to the right-handed batting rookie. Shallow at third base. Scott Rowland, the 1-0 coming. And this one a swing and a foul. McCutcheon a 281 batter. 12 home runs, 52 RBIs. One of two serious rookie of the year candidates on this Pirate ball club. The other one also will bat here in the first inning. And that would be first baseman Garrett Jones. One ball, one strike. The count on McCutcheon. Ten-game hitting streak for this young man, and he waves at that slow breaking ball. He was way out in front. It's amazing all the games these clubs have played this season against one another, and Arroyo's faced the Pirates only one time, and that was way back on May the 1st when he pitched eight innings of four-hit shutout ball in a game the Reds won 4 nothing. That pitch is high and tight, and I mean down in a cloud of dust goes Andrew McCutcheon. Two and two on him. What's McCutcheon saying? He's saying that the ball hit him in the shoulder. Is that what he's saying? Yeah. Well, the plate umpire's not having any of it. Todd Tishner and so Andrew, a little bit shaken, I would imagine, will climb back into the box to await the 2-2 pitch. 
Bronson, three and three lifetime against the team whose organization he began his professional career in. In fact, pitching the big leagues for the first time in a pirate uniform, grounded foul down beyond the third base dugout. And it seemed as though every spring training game that we had where we faced the Pirates, Bronson Arroyo had a start or an appearance mm -hmm. in that game. This one foul back and McCutcheon hanging around. Maybe that's why he hadn't pitched much against him during the season. Just the roll of the dice, I guess. Two balls and two strikes. Defensively, Joy Votto, Brandon Phillips, Drew Sutton, Scott Rowland, first, second, short, and third. Left to right in the outfield. Valentin, Tavares, and Gomes. And Hannigan behind the plate as McCutcheon continues to get pieces of balls and foul them off. Oriole making his 32nd start of the year. Three complete games, two shutouts, a 4.04 earned run average, missing low and away in a full count. Some credit Andrew McCutcheon with a very good at bat. And here's another foul ball. Oriole doing his best to try and avoid what would be a for the Pirates, a game opening base on balls, but McCutcheon continuing to waste the strike pitches, and the count holding the three balls and two strikes. Bronson back to the plate with that big leg kick, and he walked him. Missed with a breaking ball up. Great at bat for Andrew McCutcheon, and the batter will be the second baseman, Delwyn Young, and we'll find out two batters into this game how manager John Russell is going to play this one. He's got a guy standing in now who's seven for his last 70. Switch hitting Young, whose batting average has dropped from 311 down to the current 265 mark. Seven for 72 for his last 35. And let's see if they'll have him trying to advance McCutcheon with a bunt. Royal sights a sign. McCutcheon has the lead. And the pitch and a ground ball slap to the right side. There's a throw to second and the relay. And that's a double play. Four to six to three. First pitch hitting Delwyn Young, hitting a two bouncer to Brandon Phillips. He and Sutton and Votto collaborate on the double play that'll make Garrett Jones a two out batter. As part of its extra effort program, Ohio Casualty and Safeco Insurance, members of the Liberty Mutual Group will make a donation to the Cincinnati chapter of the American Red Cross each time the Reds hit a double or a triple. It's the extra effort program from Ohio Casualty and Safeco Insurance and their independent agents. Two down, here's Young, and the pitch, and it's inside and low, ball one. When you're Bronson Arroyo and you know that you can count on that type of double play action from your middle infielders, that is some kind of comfortable feeling. 1-0 pitch to the left-hand batter, a strike. 20 home runs, 41 RBIs for Garrett Jones on appearing in only a 72nd game of the year. He has played in far less than half the games. There's a call strike. And the count goes to one and two on him. He's a 28-year-old rookie. We talked about his 20 home runs and being 28, the oldest rookie to hit 20-plus home runs since Bobby Darwin did it for the Minnesota Twins back in the early 70s. Here's a foul ball back. But he leads all rookies in home runs and slugging percentage while ranking third in hitting with a 301 batting average and third in on base percentage. So he's got some very, very impressive numbers. No score here in the bottom of the first inning with two out. Arroyo ahead in the count, delivers and just misses. And Hannigan thought that was a strike. He held that catcher's mitt right there where he caught the pitch. Upon hearing the plate umpire, Tishner call it ball two. Lastings Millage rather surprisingly batting in the cleanup position for the Pirates waiting on deck. And there's a strikeout swinging on a pitch in to end the inning. Mm. At the end of one full, the Reds and the Bucks are scoreless on the Cincinnati Bell. Reds Radio Network. Subs. Stop mm. by and enjoy their signature Philly cheesesteak subs and authentic fresh cut fries. 
Penn Station East Coast Subs at Great American Ballpark, located on the first base concourse in the view level. Try yours when the Reds return off this road trip. Brandon Phillips opens things up here in the top of the second after a scoreless first inning for both clubs. Coming in, having hit in 12 out of the last 13 games, raising his batting average to 279. 20 home runs, 94 knocked in, taps one, third baseline. That ball's going to stay fair, and it's an infield base hit. Pitcher broke off the mound, Charlie Morton, and cocked his arm as if to throw and realized what the heck. Hang on to it, infield single for Phillips, and that's the way inning number two begins. You couldn't you couldn't roll that out there with your hand any better. As nope. long as you get it on the grass in this ballpark, and... Great American ballpark is about the same. You roll it along that grass and it doesn't hit the dirt, you got a knock. So that'll bring up Scott Rowland, also having a, a very, very good series here in Pittsburgh. He drove in two runs last night after a three RBI performance on Tuesday night. He'll have to wait a moment to take a look at the first pitch from Morton as the throw goes to first. Trying to keep a man who has stolen 25 bases as close to the bag as he possibly can. Now the pitch. Roland checks on a pitch inside ball one. Roland batting 276, couple of home runs, 20 RBIs to go with six doubles. Infield a double play depth. Phillips leading and Roland rips one to deep left but a foul ball. We talked about the rather intimate crowd here today. The upper deck conspicuous by the absence of anybody, and that is not by accident. That was by edict. Pirates were not allowed to sell any upper deck tickets for this ball game with the G20 Summit beginning today here in Pittsburgh. Leaders from some 85 nations around the world, you know the story. President Obama due in this afternoon. And... Uh, we talk about lockdown. I don't think that any of us in our lifetime have seen the kind of police security, both from a federal, a state, a local level, and all over the country. They brought police officers in from all points on the compass throughout the United States. We had a couple of guys that jumped on our bus just to say hello to us this morning from Chicago. Here's a pitch to roll, and it's high, and a quick throw down to first, but not in time. How about the dogs going through the rooms this morning on some of the players? Really? They, they hadn't even woke up, and they had knocks on the doors. Federal security. And I mean, they're in there in their drawers, and they got dogs sniffing through the room. They must know what a good guy I was, because nobody bothered my room. Yeah, they were coming down my hall by the time I walked out. I was kind of happy about that. <laughs> not a real big getting woke up guy. Here's a 2-1 pitch, and it's foul back. Federal, two. federal or not. 2-2, two and two, the count on Scott Rowland. Johnny Gomes waiting on deck. Pity the poor Dodgers. They play a night game in Washington tonight, and then they fly into Pittsburgh after that game. And they are coming right smack dab into the middle of it. <laughs> Help them. There's a throw on to first. Charlie Morton, very, very deliberate. Roland settling back into the batter's box to continue the second inning at bat after an infield single by Phillips. Right-hander straightens up on the mound, works, and it's hit hard. There's a the third baseman up throwing to second one, turn it over to first. Scott Rowland bangs into a hard hit 5-4-3 double play. That baby was Taylor made right at Andy LaRoche. Two down on in the inning, and here's Johnny Gomes as we check our Cincinnati Bell trivia question. Text your answer of A, B, or C to 87538. For your chance to win a pair of Reds tickets and a $25 Skyline Chili gift card brought to you by Cincinnati Bell's Why Pay for Two Plan. Homer on the go, you use the same internet, you shouldn't have to pay twice. Born in Cincinnati on this day in 1921, 
Hmm. This player is one of only two Reds to hit a home run in his first big league plate appearance. Clyde Bulmer, Ted Tapp, or Herm Wiemeyer? Oh, that's going to be an easy one. One ball and no strikes on Johnny Gomes. Is that the end of it? That's the end of it. 1 0 pitch. At the knees, a strike. Can I have the names for me? Clyde Bulmer, Ted Tapp, Herm Wiemeyer. A, B, or C. The 1 1 offering, swinging at a fly ball headed toward right, will end the inning. Hey. Coming on to play it is Brandon Moss, and that takes care of the Reds in the second. Clyde Bulmer is your guest. Hey. Hey, that's Clyde Bulmer. We go to the bottom of the second. No score. Cincinnati Bell, Reds Radio Network. Lansing's Millage has taken a first pitch strike as we move to the bottom of the second inning. Batting in the cleanup spot today, and the next one's chopped back toward Arroyo, who bends down to pick it up and throws him out. We welcome in the Hall of Famer from the Dayton Daily News, Al McCoy. I'm going to ask you the skyline, the Cincinnati Bell trivia question of the game. Born in Cincinnati on this day in 1921. This player is one of only two Reds to hit a home run in his first big league plate appearance. Clyde Bulmer, Ted Tapp, or Herm Wiemeyer? I'm going to say Clyde Bulmer. Clyde Bulmer is your answer, okay? First pitch is in for a call strike to what Brandon Moss. What are you laughing at, Kevin? That's what I said. Oh, dear. That means I got it wrong. That doesn't bode well. Oh, that does not bode well. That is not fair. <laughs> Here's the 0-1 pitch to Moss, and the pitch is up and away. One ball and one strike. I was pumped you said my answer. <laughs> we'll let you know later what the answer is. All right. All right. One ball, one strike to count on Moss. Left-handed batter hitting a 241 with seven homers. He pulls it foul at first base. Surprised that Willie Tavares got a start today? Yeah, I really am. But I guess they will give Stubbs a day off once in a while. And as, uh, as Dusty put it uh, before the game, he has to earn his keep and has to play sometime. Not a real ringing endorsement. No, I, I would not say it was a ringing endorsement by anybody's measuring stick. Matter of fact, I uh, had a long discussion on center field for next year, and uh, I got the impression that uh, Drew Stubbs is the front runner. I don't think there's any question. Mm -hmm. Should be. Yeah. Yeah. I but, mean, when, yeah. when when Dusty invoked the name of Wally Pipp the other day, I mean, that was it, man. It's yeah. rather yeah. insightful. Right. Two two pitch and a fly ball headed toward Tavares in center. He moves a bit toward right field to make the catch, and there are two men out. We also, uh, you know, Chris Dickerson was discussed too. Right. So. You really wonder where he fits into the equation if we assume, for the sake of argument, that Drew Sutton, uh, Drew Stubbs will go into spring training as a right. guy that everybody else has to beat out for that position. Yep, absolutely. I don't know. Maybe he's thinking about left field. But uh, Chris, Chris came, Chris came on. Pinch hitting and playing in part time duty. That's when he really started to figure things out and start to hit the ball really well. One ball and no strikes on third baseman Andy LaRoche. With his injuries, Hal, don't you think that, that a platoon type thing for Dickerson fits in better than just an everyday deal? Yeah, as long as it's left field. I can't see it being in center field. Right. I, I think Drew Stubbs is going to be I, I agree with that. Yeah, I agree with right. that. And Dusty was rather pointed before the game on that, too, saying uh, when somebody asked him about Chris Dickerson, he said, well, he's got to play. Yeah. So I don't I mean, I, you know, I had no idea that when he suffered the ankle sprain, it would be as lingering as it obviously is. I mean, we don't expect to see him the rest of the year now. No, absolutely not. I, I thought the same thing. You know, an ankle sprain, uh, he'll be back before the end of the season. It's almost like it was broken. Yeah. Well, sometimes they say that the sprain mm -hmm. is worse, worse than yep. breaking it. Yes. One ball and two strikes on Andy LaRoche with two out and the base is empty. And there's a very high pop-up that Joey Votto will take care of in foul ground. And he makes the catch to end the inning. How do you do it, Hal? And I don't know how you do it. It's amazing. 
like to have you in here for all nine innings. <laughs> we might have an hour, 45-minute game, but every day. <laughs> now we'll see you then, guys. All right, pal, thank you. Three men up, three men down. We've got the third coming up. Final game of three between the Reds and the Bucks. Inning number three about to unfold. 0-0 zero, zero, Reds and the Bucks with uh, Vladimir Valentin stepping in to hit for the first time on this very nice Thursday afternoon. And with a play-by-play, Jeff Brent. Thank you, Marty. Makes me feel good that Hal McCoy guessed the same answer on the trivia that I did. Didn't make him feel good. I know. He, <laughs> he felt bad. Made me feel good. First pitch from Charlie Morton is a fastball down and away. That's outside. Valentine has not seen the plate in a while. We'll see how the young right-hander does today. Swings, first pitch, driven towards right field. Going back is Moss. He'll put the glove up, makes the catch. Hit high, but not too far back, one down. One out in the inning. That'll bring Ryan Hannigan to the plane. Catching situations seem to work out pretty good this week. Hernandez caught Vaquedo, which worked out well. Arroyo and Hannigan have been a tandem, seems like, all year long, and Corky Miller and Homer Bailey worked out pretty well, I'd say, yesterday. That pitch is down. Sinking fastball, hard slider from the right-hander, Charlie Morton. That pitch is in off the plate. Another hard fastball running in on Ryan Hannigan. Hannigan's got a pretty good eye. Have to thread the needle if he's going to take a hack at it. Change up down and away, and he lets that baby go by for a third ball. Three balls and no strikes. If Morton is going to be a starting pitcher in the future, he has got to stay away from those three ball counts, and he's walking. So a base on balls for the second time here in just the first three innings by Charlie Morton. Free passes are deadly. And that's against any club, especially from the leadoff variety. So Hannigan is at first base. Seems as though the worldwide leader in bunts is at home plate in Bronson Arroyo. Right-hander stands in. He'll square around, pulls the bat back on a high fastball. One ball and no strikes. Bronson Arroyo has come to be known as automatic when he has an opportunity to get a bunt down. 14 on the year, looking for number 15. Pitch from Morton. It's bunted, and it's bunted foul. That one bunted off the foot, the back foot. Of Bronson Arroyo. Looked as though he was trying to bunt that down the third baseline, and the third baseman, Andy LaRoche, is right on top of him. Maybe better going on towards first base to advance Hannigan. Not always an easy task here for the pitcher to advance the runner. The bunting issue is not necessarily the problem, it's the speed of the base runner. And it's usually been the catcher. Here's the pitch. This one fouled off behind home plate. And he, Arroyo taking a swing there. One ball, two strikes, one down. Hannigan is at first base. As you hear, the helicopters continue to fly by both the stadium and the downtown area here in Pittsburgh and PNC Park. G20 Summit pitch, breaking ball, fouled again back behind home plate. That ball was a good foot outside, and Arroyo did a good job to get out there and foul it off. LaRoche continues to play way in on the grass at third base. Garrett Jones holding on Hannigan at first. No one out here in the inning. 
And squaring around to bunt this time is Arroyo, and he gets it down right in front of home plate. LaRoche fires to second. They get him, and they don't get the double play. So a nice job by Andy LaRoche. He got right on top of Arroyo. Arroyo bunts after fouling off three pitches. LaRoche still there to make the play. Cut right in front of Charlie Morton. Morton had to hit the deck as he threw right over the top of him. Shortstop Luis Cruz kind of did a area code play there at second base to try to turn the double play, but they get Hannigan at second. 5-6 on the fielder's choice. Arroyo is at first base, and here's Willie Tavares. Tavares up for the second time. Struck out the first time on a high fastball. This pitch hit into left field. Base hit. That ball looked like it hit the foot of the third baseman, Andy LaRoche. He started to lunge for the baseball, and I'm not sure if it hit the cut of the grass and then his foot or exactly how that came off, but he lunged for it. Maybe it hit his glove and bounced out that way. It's hard to tell from way up here. But that's a base hit for Willie Tavares. A two-out hit at that, and here's Drew Sutton. Two down in the inning. The Reds have a runner at second base. Morton kicks and deals. A breaking ball right on the inside corner. You don't see that pitch too many times from... Charlie Morton, that big curveball. He's more sinker and short slider. A shorter, harder breaking ball. But he starts off Sutton with a slow breaking ball. And we'll see what he comes back with here as Jaramillo heads out to the mound. And normally this is a point in time, especially early in the ball game, when you get your first runner at second base. Catcher comes out. You change the signs with a runner at second. And instead of just giving one sign, you may give a set of three, you may give a set of four, but you change the signs that you give so the runner that's standing at second base looking straight into the catcher's mitt cannot pick up the signs and relay them to the hitter standing at home plate with some type of signal. Swing and a miss on another slow breaking ball outside this time, and Sutton swings right over the top of it. No balls, two strikes, two down. Runners at first and second. Tavares at first. Arroyo at second base. The pitch. Breaking ball in. And this time Sutton lets that baby just come on by. Bounces down in the dirt. One ball and two strikes. Sutton saw four consecutive pitches. Outside of the strike zone, his first time up. Long look in from Morton this time as he checks out the plate. Here's the pitch. Another breaking ball inside. Great job by Jaramillo behind the plate. He continues to make sure that ball stays in front, and he also continues to make sure that Charlie Morton and here on the same page. One ball and two strikes on a semi-cloudy afternoon here in Pittsburgh, but it is a beautiful day for baseball, especially looking out over the river and into the city. Line drive down the left field line. Is it fair? Yes, it is. And that baby bounces into the seats. That's an unlucky bounce for the Reds. Otherwise, that's going to score Tavares all the way from first base. But instead, it'll be a ground rule double for Sutton. One to nothing, Reds, as they take the lead. Sutton with an outstanding at bat. Had him down in the count. No balls and two strikes. Continued to pound him with those breaking balls. He finally got a fastball he could handle. Shot it down the left field line. It bounces into the seats for a ground rule double. And the Reds. Have Joey Votto at the plate with two down and runners at second and third. Sinker down and away. That's a ball. One ball and no strengths. 
Votto absolutely crushed his last ball right to the 375 sign in right center field. That's exactly where Brandon Moss was playing him, and he had to actually leap to catch it. There's a fastball inside. He starts it underneath the hands of Joey Votto and runs it right back over the inside corner. Votto likes that pitch out over the plate that he can drive into left center field toward the red bullpen. The off-speed stuff is usually the pitch you see him pull. Here's Morton with a pitch, a line drive, this time into the right center field gap. It's going all the way to the wall. Two runs are around to score. McCutcheon picks it up, gets it back in, and Votto has been a doubles machine. 32 doubles now for Joey Votto. 75-76 on the RBI total, and he has run his game hit streak to six. How about that? Back-to-back -back doubles for the Reds, and it is now three to one, three to none. All with two outs as the Reds keep coming. Runner at second base for Brandon Phillips. And it seems as though every time Phillips has come to the plate in these last few ball games, there has been somebody standing at second waiting for him to knock him in. Fastball up, and he fouls it straight back. Three zip for the Red Legs, and they've all come right here and right now. Morton, the right-hander, kicks and deals a fastball up. They'll throw back behind Votto, not in time. Jaramillo has got quite an arm back there behind home plate, and he is showing it off. He throws back behind Votto as Luis Cruz breaks in behind him at shortstop. And I guarantee you that'll sit in the back of Votto's mind for a moment. Morton kicks and deals a high breaking ball, breaking right over the head of Brandon Phillips. Morton got Ballantine to fly out to right field. Walt Hannigan, who was quickly erased on the attempted sacrifice bunt by Bronson Arroyo as Andy LaRoche made a nice play to cut him down. Here's a fly ball into short left field. That will not be caught. Another base hit for Phillips. And Phillips has now eclipsed his career RBI total. Four to nothing Reds as Phillips puts RBI number 95 on the board. That's the most he has ever had in a season. On his quest for 100 as Joe Kerrigan comes to the mound, Phillips two for two on the day. Hit that baby right off the end of the bat. But they all count as Votto scores from second. And that is now four consecutive base hits with two outs against Charlie Morton. And this is the part of pitching that just absolutely hammers you. You get two outs and you can't close the door. This is when you have to learn to slow the game down a little bit and make it happen. Breaking ball in there for a strike. Phillips is now hit in 13 of his last 14 ball games. He has eclipsed his career high in RBIs as the right-hander Morton attempts to pick to first base. Phillips not with a big lead over there right now. 95 RBI is the career high now for Phillips. He's got 28 doubles, which is a career high. His next double will eclipse that. Ground ball hit foul down the left field line by Scott Rowland. Rowland grounded into a 5-4-3 double play his last time at the plate. And that was after Phillips let off the second inning with an infield single that looked like a bunt down the third baseline. And 
Roland hit a smoker down there to Roche at third. Here's the 0-2. Fastball upstairs. One ball and two strikes. They play Roland straight up in the infield, and the outfield is shifted the other way. McCutcheon way on the right side of the right field side of second base. Pitch. Ground ball foul again right off the railing of the third base dugout. Roland spun around on that one in a hurry. Charlie Morton doing anything he can to get out of this. Pitch and a jam shot foul over to the right side and out of play. Fans for a great tasting quality meal for your family, pick up a bag of JTM beef or chicken Philly cheesesteaks from your favorite grocer. JTM, food, family, and fun. Scott Rowland hidden in the number five spot with a chance to keep this rally going as Morton picks the first base one more time. One ball and two strikes on Scott Rowland. Four consecutive hits from the Reds have brought in four runs, all with two outs. The two out rally has been enormous for the Reds. Pitch, high breaking ball that Roland fouls straight back. Roland really keeping himself balanced. He chokes up just a little bit when he gets two strikes. Keeps those hands back, strides very little when he has two strikes, just trying to shoot the ball right back up the box. There goes Phillips. Line drive foul into the seats down the left field line, and Phillips had that one. Big time jump by Brandon Phillips that time in his quest to steal his 26th base. He has 25 on the year, which leads all National League second basemen. Morton looks back into Jaramillo for the sign. A long look in this time. He'll come to the set and step off the back. Either Roland or the catcher Jaramillo called time there as Roland stepped out of the batter's box. He's back in. He's ready to go. Phillips takes his lead at first. Here's the pitch. There goes the runner, and it's fouled straight back again. So Phillips with a couple of sprints down to second base as he looks into Roland and the third base coach, Mark Berry. How many times do you want me to run? Out to the mound again is Jaramillo. Trying to do everything he can to help his pitcher. And most catchers, that's what you want from them if you're a pitcher. You want a catcher that is as concerned about you as he is about his batting average. The only player on the field that is responsible for two players. That would be the catcher. Responsible for himself and you on the mound. One ball and two strikes, two down here. Four nothing Reds in the third. A fly ball in the right field going back is Young coming in as Moss. Moss will make the catch and the Pirates finally dig themselves out of this inning. Four to nothing Reds over the Pirates as we head to the bottom of three on the Cincinnati Bell Reds Radio Network. The team still able to score four runs. His first pitch is right in there to Jason Jaramillo. Strike one. Jaramillo, the switch hitting catcher. Last seven ball games hitting at a 381 clip. Arroyo kicks and deals. Fastball just off the outside corner. Ball one. One ball, one strike to Jaramillo. Cruz waiting on deck, and then the pitcher, Morton. 
Sidearm breaking ball. Gets a little bit inside on Arroyo. Two balls and a strike. Arroyo with a rock back. He kicks sidearm again, and he catches that inside corner. Strike two. Two balls and two strikes to Jaramillo, and Jaramillo has yet to leave the batter's box. Arroyo trying to make kick quick work. Here he comes. Off the handle as he fouls it down to his own third base coach. Does Jaramillo, Tony Beasley, and he flips it in the stands. Bronson Arroyo has got to feel confident with every pitch he throws. The right-hander kicks and deals a breaking ball, and it's fouled off at home plate as he had Jaramillo Lungeon. And that's really the object for Bronson Arroyo. He's not after trying to blow away every hitter that comes to the plate. All he's trying to do is keep him on the old proverbial rocking chair. Little on, little off, little in, little out. Ground ball, a dribbler foul down the first baseline. And he's got Jaramillo fouling the baseball all over the place, including his own foot. So Jaramillo takes a little squat there to try to relieve the pain from that foul ball off of his foot. He's back in the batter's box. Arroyo looks into Hannigan for the sack. He'll rock back, kick, and here he comes. Popped up to the left side, headed for the seats, and that's where that one will land. And it's out of play. So Jaramillo battling for all he's worth. Jaramillo came into the ball game at the 259 mark, even though he's hit well over the last seven games. Pitch again fouled off into the seats on the left side. So he is trying everything he can, Jason Jaramillo, to stay inside the baseball and either drive it the other way or up the middle. And with two strikes, that is a good hitting technique. The object is to be able to execute it. A lot easier said than done. Arroyo with a windup. Here's the pitch. Sidearm breaking ball. And he pops him up right to the catcher. Hannigan will make the play. One down. Let's pause for station ID here on the Reds Radio Network. Jaramillo, a great at bat, but he finally pops out to the catcher, and here's Luis Cruz. Cruz hitting from the right side, takes the first pitch. It's off the outside corner, ball one. Cruz is two for his last 22 as he takes that fastball right down Broadway. Strike one. One ball and one strike to Cruz. And he takes that pitch on the inside corner. One ball and two strikes. Cruz played second base last night and shortstop this afternoon. Arroyo. Line drive. Right center, left center field. And in comes Tavares to... Catch it on one hop, and that's a base hit for the Pirates, their first of the day, and a base hit for Luis Cruz, and it's been some time since he's put one of those on the board. Looked like an off-speed pitch up in the strike zone, and Cruz got the bat to it. He didn't hit it real hard, but hard enough to get it out of the infield and in front of Tavares. Here's Morton. He doesn't bunt. He squares and takes that pitch. It's a breaking ball off the plate. Both Votto and Roland charging rapidly. The movement among the infielders. Sutton moves to second base as they charge. 
And Votto rolling, coming to the plate, and Phillips goes to first. Here's the pitch, and it's bunted and foul. Morton does have a bunt this year, and that's all he has, a bunt. He has gotten one sacrifice down, and he's trying to double his output here and put a second bunt down. All you have to do is catch the baseball with the fat part of the bat. Don't stab at it. Don't pull the bat back. That pitch is down and away. Two balls and one strike to the pitcher, Charlie Morton. Bronson Arroyo on the mound, rubbing up the new baseball that he just received. He's got one out in the inning. The base hit by Cruz comes with one out. He's at first base. And the batter is Charlie Morton trying to bunt the baseball. And here he comes, and it's bunted down the first baseline. A good bunt. Votto has nowhere to go but to Brandon Phillips at first. And that, my friends, is a successful sacrifice bunt. Nice job by Charlie Morton as he moves Luis Cruz down to second base for the leadoff hitter, Andrew McCutcheon, with two down. Score that 3-4, Votto to Phillips, the out on the sacrifice. Down to second base is Cruz with two down in the inning, and here's Andrew McCutcheon. McCutcheon walked his first time up. And we'll see how Arroyo faces him here with a runner at second base. Fastball right down Broadway and... Not sure what kind of swing that was from McCutcheon, but he wasn't expecting that pitch. Was that a curveball swing right there? That was a curveball swing <laughs> on a fastball <laughs> pitch. It sure was. <laughs> Arroyo looks into Hannigan for the sign and kicks and deals. There's a breaking ball, and it is popped up in the left center field. Over to get it is Valentine, and the Reds are out of the inning. A good job by Arroyo as he shuts down the Pirates and McCutcheon with a runner at second. It is four to nothing Reds as we head to the fourth on the Cincinnati Bell Reds Radio Network. We head to the fourth inning. Reds are on top of the Pirates four to nothing again this season. Western and Southern Financial Group wants to strike out cancer. All season long, every time a Cincinnati pitcher strikes out an opposing batter, Western and Southern will make a donation to the Barrett Cancer Center. As Western and Southern says, when it comes to fighting cancer, we're all in this one together. Johnny Gomes set to lead things off for the Reds here in the top of the fourth inning as they lead by four. Reds put a four spot on Charlie Morton and the Pirates in the third, and we'll look to add on to that here in the fourth. Morton, the right-hander, rocks, kicks, and deals. A breaking ball up high to Gomes. One ball and no strikes. Gomes was the only batter that did not come to the plate in the third inning. Maybe he might be a little jealous right here as he rips this baby down the right field line into the seats and foul. That's the one thing Gomes has done a whole lot better as the season has progressed is his ability to drive the ball the other way. He's not just a dead pull hitter as we saw in spring training in the beginning of the season when he first came up. He is much more comfortable at the plate. Swing and a miss on a good change up. That pitch by Charlie Morton was in the same exact spot as it started as the last pitch. A fastball on the last pitch, followed it with a changeup. Both started in the same spot. Here he comes. Swing and a miss. Strike three. Back to back. Changeups to Johnny Gomes. Both down and away, and Gomes goes down as a strikeout. Second strikeout of the ball game for the right hander Morton. His first game against Willie Tavares to begin the ball game. And there's number two. Two down for Vladimir Valentin. 
Fastball outside corner, and that's a strike. Morton with a long look into Jaramillo. Swing and a miss. Threw that bad boy right by him. Fastball right down the heart of the plate, and Valentin swung as the mitt clapped. No balls and two strikes to Vladimir Valentin. And here comes Morton. Fastball up and in, and he's letting her loose now. Four runs in the third may have given Charlie a little wake up call because he's bringing it in there now. Change up, and Valentin hits that ball straight down into the dirt and foul. One ball, two strikes, one out. Reds are on top of the Pirates, four to nothing as we start the bottom of the fourth inning. Gomes struck out on back to back change ups, and here's Vladimir Valentin with a one two count. Morton kicks and deals. Fastball just misses the outside corner. Good pitch there by Morton, and he wanted it, and so did Jaramillo. Jaramillo, the catcher, Charlie Morton, the pitcher. Right hander gets his sign, and here's the pitch. Line drive right off his back. He'll pick it up. Throws to first, and they got him. And that's not going to feel real good for Charlie Morton. You can hear that baby all the way up here. That was a dead thump right in the middle of the back. Dropped straight down. He turned and grabbed the baseball. Fired it to first base. He was looking into center field to find the ball. Valentin hit that baby right on the nose. A line drive right back up the box. And that's got to hurt a little bit, no matter how tough you are. A fastball down and away, and he's telling trainer Brad Henderson that it hit him in the right side of the gluteus maximus. Same spot Andre Dawson got me in 1990. I finished my ball game, but I had a bruise the size of a football after the game. And it looked like black leather for about two months. So it looks like Morton will stay in there. And that's a good sign for the Pirates that it caught all muscle and didn't hit his knee or anything above the head or above the neck, I should say, around the head. Well, that, that's when you know things get dangerous when the ball comes back that fast and Morton was looking into center field. Here's Ryan Hannigan. Ground ball pulled foul off the third base dugout as the third base coach Mark Berry flips it into his stands to some lucky fan. Little youngster, he's got to be happy getting a ball on a day like today. Everybody should get a ball on this game. Morton kicks and deals down and away. One ball, one strike to Ryan Hannigan. Hannigan walked his last time up. He was erased on the attempted bunt by Bronson Arroyo on a nice play by Andy LaRoche. To throw him out at second base, the 1-1 one, one pitch, breaking ball just misses the outside corner. Pretty good pitch, but umpire Todd Tishner says just outside. Tishner behind home, James Hoy at first, Tim Cheetah, crew chief out there at second, and Bob Davidson at third. That's your umpiring crew. Charlie Morton rips, and this is foul down the third baseline. That ball hit the tarp just beyond the third base dugout and trickles out onto the field to Andy LaRoche and he'll flip it into the stands. So, so far, Ryan Hannigan has been a fan favorite here in Pittsburgh. He's given away a lot of foul balls. Two balls, two strikes, two down. Fastball misses up and away and the counter run full. Arroyo waits on deck. 
Two down in the inning, and I'm sure Charlie Morton would like to get this batter right here, right now. Fastball, jam shot down the first baseline. Nice running catch by Garrett Jones. Jones makes the catch. Hannigan is out. Three up, three down for the first time today for the right-hander. Charlie Morton, four to nothing Reds as we have. Toyota dealers and the full-size Toyota Tundra. With the capability to tow over 10,000 pounds, Tundra's the truck that's changing it all. Young stands in. The right-hander Arroyo clips the outside corner. Strike one. Young grounded into a 4-6-3 double play his first time up. And he pops this ball up into left field. Ballantine looks like he's got it. He does. One down. Clouds are starting to dissipate here in Pittsburgh, and the sun is starting to shine on through. Beautiful time of the year to play baseball, whether you got every national security member or not here in town as the G20 Summit begins today. The Reds will be heading out after the ball game, heading to Houston, and the Dodgers will be coming to town. Here's Garrett Jones. Left-hander takes the first pitch inside from Bronson Arroyo. One ball and no strikes. Jones leading all National League rookies with that 20 home run mark. Change up just off the plate away, and you can hear Todd Tishner say, Nope, that's out. Two balls and no strikes to the left handed hitting Garrett Jones, and he has got some suck. A breaking ball. That'll catch the outside corner as Bronson Arroyo drops down sidearm and brings it in there from Laredo. Yeah. Jones set and ready. Here comes Arroyo. Ground ball up the middle. Nobody's going to get that one. That's a base hit for Jones. Second hit of the day for the Pirates. Both coming with one out in the inning. Jones struck out his first time, this time singles up the middle, and here's Lasting's Millage. Millage grounded out to Arroyo his first time up, but coming into the ball game, hitting 355 in his last 26 games. This guy has been on fire as of late. Lasting's Millage takes the breaking ball down and away. One ball and no strikes. Millage has been one of those players that since he has come to the Pirates, he has been nothing but phenomenal, both defensively and offensively, as Arroyo picks the first base to keep Jones close. Last six games, lasting smillage, 11 for 25. That'll clock in at 440 on the batting average meter. Swing and a miss on a good pitch down and away as Millage swings right over the top of it. One ball and one strike to lasting smillage. Came up as a 20-year-old for the New York Mets moved on to the Nationals where he started an opening day this year. Had an injury, was sent down, fastball in, that's a ball. And then came to the Pirates. And the way he's swinging the bat right now, I would imagine the Pirates are awfully happy that he's here. 291, a couple of home runs. 
16 RBIs as he swings and misses that one. A very slow breaking ball from Bronson Arroyo. Arroyo can change speeds anywhere from 90 to 91 all the way down to 61, 62. So you're talking about a 30 mile an hour difference that you have to be prepared for and that ain't easy. Runner at first base is Jones. Arroyo on the mound facing Millage. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss. Strike three. And Millage could not handle that slow breaking ball. And for the second time this afternoon, Arroyo has made him look a little silly. Two down. Brandon Moss comes to the plate. Left-handed hitter. He was acquired from the Red Sox. He has got some pop in that bat as well. Flat out to center field his first time up. And Arroyo will go after him here with two down and a runner at first base. Fastball right down Broadway. Strike one. Brandon Moss, 20 doubles on the year. He does have seven home runs, 37 RBIs, hitting at a 241 clip. Left-handed hitter standing in, and here's the pitch from Arroyo. He hits it foul down the left field line, into the seats and out of play, and they will scramble for that bad boy. You can see the kids are jumping when those balls hit the stands. You just hope they don't run for it too early while it's still flying airborne. Those hurt. No balls and two strikes to Brandon Moss. Arroyo, a long look into Hannigan. He'll come set. Check Jones. Pitch. Ground ball right back to Arroyo. Underhanded on Devato. And that'll be it again for the Pirates. One hit. No runs. Moss, the last man out. Four to nothing. Heads on top of the Pirates as we head to five on the center. on top of the Pirates as we head to the fifth. It's four to nothing Reds. Charlie Morton, Bronson Arroyo back with a play-by-play. -play. Here's Marty Brenneman. Thank you, Jeff. It'll be Arroyo to lead things off. He reached on a fielder's choice, unable to get a bunt down in the third, but later came around to score one of the four Reds runs in that inning. Morton delivers, and it's Anthony's for a call strike. That's really the only bad inning he's had. He walked a batter in the first, gave up an infield hit in the second, retired the Reds in order in the fourth. But the third has so far been his undoing. And it's quickly 0-2 on the taking Bronson Arroyo. Morton working quickly, bringing it on up there, and a ground ball to the left side, backhanded by Cruz, the shortstop. And the throw on across to Garrett Jones, one out. Willie Tavares, one for two on the day. His base hit a big one in the third. Came with Arroyo on and one man, two men out. He lined a soft single to left, and then it began a double by Sutton, one nothing. Two run double by Botto, three nothing. RBI single Phillips, and it was a four run inning. One gone, and here's Willie, and the first pitch to him is taken for a strike. We want to extend happy birthday greetings today to a lady in Troy, Ohio, Catherine West, celebrating her 81st birthday today. She said, last year I went skydiving for my birthday when she was 80. How about that? One and one the count. She said, this year it would be just as exciting to hear my name on Red's radio. And a lot safer. Oh, well, you know, you it's all a know. matter. It's all a matter of your perspective. She didn't have a problem skydiving at the age of 80. I wouldn't do it at the age of whatever. So congratulations, Catherine West, on your 81st birthday. Doing it probably a little bit less exciting today, just hanging out and catching our broadcast from your home in Troy. Catherine has definitely got my respect and honor. Yes, she does. 
That pitch inside to even the count on Tavares two and two. Cowboy would have to be the cowgirl on that day. I got you. I don't think I'd be doing it. Skydiving, partner. Two balls, two strikes. Drew Sutton waiting to bat next. Tavares hits it hard, but the second baseman, Delwyn Young, playing him perfectly, and he makes a pick up and throws him out. And Sutton will be the two out batter. Up twice and on twice today. He has walked. He has had a double and a run batted in and has scored a run. Catcher Aramillo letting everybody know defensively they're two out in the inning. Well, that at bat he had back in the third inning was phenomenal. He fouled off about five pitches. Fastball high ball one. Two streaks on the line here today. The Pirates have lost five games in a row. They're actually three streaks. The Reds have won four straight or have won three in a row trying to make it four. And the Reds have won seven games in a row from the Pirates. Two balls and no strikes with two outs and the base is empty. So you'd like to think from the Reds standpoint that streaks would be extended. Here's a very high fly ball into shallow left coming on Lastings Millage and he will make the catch and the Reds are up and down one, two, three for the second straight time. After four and a half, Reds in front four zip on the Cincinnati Bell Red Radio Network. We're in the bottom of the fourth, bottom of the fifth inning. Bronson Arroyo going to work on Andy LaRoche, who fouled out to Joey Votto his first time up, and the fastball is in for a strike. Two hits is all the Pirates have had through the first four off the Reds' righty, seeking his 14th victory today. Back he comes, and LaRoche with a ground ball die, the diving third baseman rolling, and down the left field line. That's going to be an extra base hit. And LaRoche takes a big wide turn as that ball ran away from Vladimir Ballantine in foul ground down the left field line. But a leadoff double just out of the reach of Scott Rowland was not hit all that hard, but hard enough to elude the Reds' third baseman. So LaRoche on with his 22nd double of the season. And the batter will be the catcher, Jason Jaramillo, who fouled out to catcher Ryan Hannigan his first time up. Fans, the party this season is in the Kroger Bleachers. Ticket prices start at just 7 bucks, and for additional savings, plan a group outing of 25 or more. Get your ticket by calling 381-REDS or go to reds.com. This young man here is the guy who did the bulk of the catching while Ryan Domit was out rehabilitating that broken wrist that he suffered earlier in the year. First pitch to him is pull foul, and we'll pause for identification on the Reds radio network. Andy LaRoche standing out at second after a leadoff double. We're in the Pirate fifth inning. The Reds have a four-zip lead. Jaramillo, a switch hitter, batting left-handed. And the stretch in the pitch to him, and it's in for call strike two. Arroyo is fan two, is walk one. Jaramillo back in the box, taps the plate with the head of the bat. So the Pirates with an opportunity to... Get a run in here in the fifth inning. Jaramillo waiting and missing high. Arroyo does with a fastball. A ball and two strikes. We, of course, will see this ball club still again. A week from tomorrow night, they will roll into Cincinnati for the final three games of the 2000. And nine baseball season in between. The Reds have a three game date with the Astros in Houston beginning tomorrow night. And then go home and after an off day on Monday, engage the soon to be National League Central champion Cardinals Tuesday night, Wednesday night, and Thursday. The stretch in the pitch. Pitch off the plate outside a ball. 
Matt Maloney will get the ball tomorrow night in game one in Houston against right-hander Brian Moeller. Two Saturday night, Justin Lear versus righty Felipe Paulino. And Sunday afternoon, Johnny Cueto against left-hander Juan de Rodriguez. A swing and a foul. Arroyo working on a 68-pitch ball game at the moment. Trying to retire Jaramillo, and if he can, do so without allowing Andy LaRoche to leave second base. Waiting on deck, the shortstop Luis Cruz, and then the pitcher spot will be up. Hannigan hanging a sign, the look back at second, onto the plate, and off the fist, but a foul ball. Down the first baseline, and the count will hold on the Pirate catcher at two balls and two strikes. Arroyo is trying to either get a strikeout or some kind of ground ball to the left side of the infield, but with Jaramillo at the plate, if you get a ground ball, most likely he's going to pull it to the right side. Battle continues here, two and two with LaRoche at second. Bronson, a long look down now, gets the sign, now comes set, now he pitches, and he misses way inside, a full count. Scott Rowland pulled well off the line at third, now backing up a few steps. Sutton shading the left-hand batter toward the middle of the infield. And now the payoff pitch on the way, and he hits it in the air. Right side, it'll be Brandon Phillips, and that is a big first out here in the Pirate fifth inning. Can you say magic? Houdini, how do you do it? Luis Cruz batting in the eight hole, but he owns one of the three hits that the Pirates have had today. A single in the left center back in the third. batter in there and trying to do what Jason Jaramillo was unable to do. Now a bluff throw back towards second. Talking about going into Houston and the pass list should be very, very interesting over the next three days. you got seven players on this Reds roster who are natives of the state of Texas. Here's a bouncer back to the box. Arroyo will go to first and get the out and advancing on the ground out is Andy LaRoche and the picture will be up in Charlie Morton. Homer Bailey from LaGrange, Jay Bruce from Beaumont, Daniel Ray Herrera from Odessa. A couple of Houston natives in Paul Yanish and Lance Nix. From Waco, Arthur Rhodes, and from Atlanta, Drew Stubbs. It's not Georgia. Atlanta, Texas. So Charlie Morton now trying to help himself with a runner at third and two out, and he takes it just a bit low and away, ball one. Houston, don't we? Yes, we do, my friend. Swing and a foul. Fried chicken. Tomorrow night, Saturday night, every night. Sunday afternoon, I'll have fried chicken with my eggs on Sunday morning. I can't wait. They cook fried chicken every day, no yes. matter what they have for the menu. That's right. They have different entrees every day, but fried chicken is a staple. There's a call strike. Like most folks would have a salad out or something like that, which they do have salad as an everyday thing. Houston has fried chicken they do. as an everyday thing. And we like it. We love it. We are big fans. That's a ball, two and two. And we love the gentleman that takes care of us. He does. That runs that cafeteria there in Houston. Arroyo trying to put Charlie Morton away with this pitch, and he does. Strike three call on the inside, and they waste a leadoff double. We go to the sixth inning with the Reds up 4 nothing. Thank you. 
Back at PNC Park, we go to the top of the sixth where Joey Votto awaits. He has had a two-run double today and two trips. He'll be the leadoff batter against Charlie Moore. Reds have five hits, four of them came in the third when they scored all four runs. Votto, one for two today, and now eight for 11 in the three games played here. 314. He's added a point to that batting average, and we'll see what he can do here. Every time he hits a ball lately, it's been dead on the screws. Even the out yep. to begin the game was a bullet. He settles in and waits on Morton, and the pitch, swing and a miss. All right, fans, it is time for X. Marty. Ask me, ask me. Where well, you can ask the Hall of Famer to give his thoughts on any subject. Baseball, non-baseball, G20 Summit, all presented by CBTS. Do it to me. Foul ball 0-2. This afternoon's question comes from Hobie, H-O-B-I-E. Yes, Hobie. In Hamilton. Come on, Hobes. Marty. Yes. I'm listening to the game and watching the show. Man versus Wild. Yes, very good show. Will there ever be a TV series entitled Marty and the Cowboy versus Wild? One and two on Votto, a most definitive no. <laughs> we like the luxuries of life. Ritz Carlton. Rather than going out and living in a tent. Correct. Or feeding off the land. Correct. Two balls and two strikes. I, I admire those guys for their intestinal fortitude and their ability to survive. As do I. Not for me. I like my steak rare, but medium rare. I hear you. <laughs> Here's a 2-2 pitch. And a foul ball. Nope. Obi, a good question, pal, but a big old fat no. And I don't mind drinking water with my steak at medium rare, but I would like to have a little ice and a glass. I got you covered. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. If you'd like to suggest a topic for Axe Marty, either now or f later. Swing and a miss. Votto's out on strikes. Please send it via email to RedZoneRadio at Reds.com. To hear some of the best of Axe Marty, go to Reds.com slash radio. Thanks to the folks at CBTS, the Cincinnati Bell Company, technology solutions for business. One away in the inning, eight batters in a row have now been retired by Charlie Morton. Here's the last man to reach. That's a good question. Yeah, not bad. Hobie. Brandon Phillips, two for two with an RBI, knocked in number 95 back in the third inning. And a foul ball on pitch one. Charlie Morton in a real good groove right now, but still that four-run deficit looms larger and larger, especially in light of the way Bron Bronson Arroyo is throwing the ball again today. Well, it goes back to a sinker ball pitcher, which Charlie Morton is. The more fatigue, the more movement that he gets. The more movement that he has at the, at the plate, the more ground balls, the less time that you have to make a decision as a hitter and more times than not you don't hit it on the fat part of the bat he comes with a 1-1 to Phillips swinging at a foul ball early in the ball game Charlie Morton's fastball was straight it didn't have as much depth in the sink and when he did throw a good sinker it was moving so much that he couldn't control it We're trying to make Phillips a ninth straight batter that's gone back to the dugout bat in hand and the ground ball will hit the first base behind the back, coughed up by Jones, recovers, and he's able to get the flip on to the covering Charlie Morton in time. Two down in the inning, and the batter will be the third baseman, Scott Rowland. He is grounded into a double play and flying out to right. Checking scores of other games brought to you by Montgomery Inn. Join the in crowd, the Montgomery Inn crowd, in Montgomery, the Boathouse, Fort Mitchell, and now in Columbus in Dublin. Nothing else to talk about. A short schedule in both leagues today. Only one other afternoon game on the docket, and that'll be coming up a bit later on. The Rangers and the Athletics in Oakland. So that game won't start for another hour and 20 minutes, and those games that will be played, other than that, will be played tonight. We can tell you if the Reds win this game today, they will 
uh, take over fourth place in the division. Houston has the day off before the Reds roll into Minute Maid Park tomorrow night. One ball, one strike. Now the wind up in the pitch. Check swing by Scott Rowland. Jumps out ahead in the count, two balls and one strike. Two up, two down. Nine in a row retired by the Pirate righty. Roland fouls at the plate, and it's two and two on the Reds' third baseman. Well, the Reds could really do a a double job of taking care of business going into Houston and, and playing well. They take two out of three or three out of three in Houston. That gets them closer to Milwaukee and separates them from Houston. Mm -hmm. Now the wind in the pitch. Fastball in, full count. The young players on this club and in this organization need to learn that you are always fighting to gain ground and move to the next level. Whether it's third, fourth, second, first. Ground ball hit hard up the middle, but cut off by Cruz. Plenty of time to throw Roland out. And we move to the bottom of the sixth inning. The Reds up 4 nothing on the Cincinnati Bell Reds Radio Network. <laughs> of the inning and that one's a fastball away for a call strike and another strike or the way he's throwing strikes and moving the ball around you stand up there with a bat on your shoulder and you are going to be behind in the count I mean right now he is 30 miles an hour difference between fastball and breaking ball. And he tried to get him to chase that slow curve away, but he didn't do it. And he has had McCutcheon baffled from the get go. I guess he's had them all baffled from, mm -hmm. from the get go. One and two the count to the leadoff batter, and this one is foul back. I think that all goes back to. The pitching inside that he does for strikes and for balls, making guys retreat their hands and then coming right back with such precision on both the slider and that slow curve ball, and he just dots that outside corner. He kicks and deals, and McCutcheon takes, and it didn't miss by much. Two and two the count. Now standing at 82 on the afternoon. McCutcheon hits it hard into right field, but getting back to make the catch is Johnny Gomes, and there's one away. UDF is having their very first design of shake sail. You dream it, UDF will make it. Around the super thick and super cold classic UDF chocolate malt or colorful blue moo cookie dough shake to even a homemade cookies and cream shake. Try all gazillion and one flavors, and they've got them. Dairy Fresh, Dairy Fun, United Dairy Farmers. Here's Delwyn Young. He's bounced into a double play and has flied out to left field, and his problems continue big time at the plate. First pitch a strike. Now seven for his last 72. Two for his last 37. The pitch. That one is slapped to short. Drew Sutton with time, throwing, and almost threw that ball away. Threw it to the outfield side of the bag, and fortunately, it was close enough that Joey Votto could go out and get it and still maintain a hold on the bag. So, young on here's Garrett Jones with two out. Well, that's the one thing that Joey Votto has really done a much better job of is his feet movement and his body placement around first base on throws, especially throws that are on short bounces or throws that are wide or tight to home plate. 
Jones is singled, and he is struck out, and he checks his swing and a call strike. Two men up, two men down. The beat rolls on for Bronson Arroyo. He comes back with a pitch, and this one pulled foul. Today's game brought to you in part by Kroger. From prescriptions and photos to party trays and cakes, you can touch all the bases at Kroger. Your home for one-stop shopping. Kroger, your other home team. Two strikes and nothing on Garrett Jones. Lastings Millage on deck. Arroyo rocks on the mound, bringing it. And it's in the air, left field, curving toward foul territory. Long run for Valentin, and could not quite get to it. And runs into the wall and falls down. That's a foul ball. And he now bounces up and bounces up, hobbling a bit. Willie Tavares comes all the way over from center field to check and see if Valentin is all right. Bent over at the waist after hitting the wall in foul territory. And apparently okay, he waves toward the dugout. Stevie Bauman, the Reds' assistant trainer, was going to come out. But Valentin says, I don't need any help, I'm fine. And now Tavares heads on back to his position in center field. Well, he looked like he twisted that left knee, trying to hold himself from slamming against the wall and still be able to get that back, that glove turned over in backhand fashion to catch the baseball. Two strikes and nothing, and two men are out, and the Reds have a four to nothing lead in the sixth inning. And the pitch is swung on and popped up behind the plate, and that will be a souvenir. Royo gets him to swing at it once. Ah, what the heck, we'll try again. He swings at it again. Head high heater. New baseball in hand. Brunson staring down to Ryan Hannigan. Pitching and his pull foul again. He has retired the side in order only once today, and that was in the second, getting Millage and Moss and LaRoche. And has a shot here in the sixth inning. He has it. Swing and a miss. That's all for Garrett Jones, and the inning is over. We go to the top of the seventh inning, 4 nothing Reds on the Cincinnati Bell Reds Radio Network. Move to the top of the seventh inning. The Reds maintaining a four to nothing lead behind the pitching of Bronson Arroyo, and they'll send Johnny Gomes up to begin this inning, probably the final one of the game. We'll see for Charlie Morton and back to the play by play. Here's Jeff. Thank you, Marty. Gomes has flied out to right field on a ball struck quite well and struck out on consecutive changeups back in the fourth inning. This will be his third at bat. It comes in the seventh, and it comes against the same hurler, the right-hander Charlie Morton, who has retired ten reds in a row. Swinging at the first pitch, pops it up to the right side. Going back is Delman Young, makes the catch, one down. Gomes likes that first pitch, and when he's going well, it's money in the bank when things aren't going so well. It's an automatic out. Here's Vladimir Ballantin. Takes a change up in there for a strike. Ballantin has been bothered by a right ring finger injury and then he just twisted his Left knee down the left field line on a ball, foul ball, and this ball is fouled off, and boy, it catches Jaramillo in a place that evidently did not feel so hot. That would be his left elbow. 
and you stand behind home plate and you're catching, whether you're the umpire or whether you're the catcher, that is a dangerous spot. We've seen hitters foul balls off of their feet or their toes, and you see catchers getting drilled. Line drive into right field, and Ballantine's got him a base hit. One for three on the afternoon for Vladimir Ballantine. He just reached out and smoked the line drive, a one-hopper out to Brandon Moss, and he's aboard with one out. So Ryan Hannigan will come to the plate. Third time this afternoon. He walked back in the third, flied out to the first baseman in the fourth, and now he'll bat for the third time here in the seventh inning. Ground ball up the middle. Delman Young on to the shortstop, on to Jones, four to six to three, and just like that, the Reds are out of the inning. We look out over the river here at PNC Park. First batter for the Pirates is Lasting's Millage. Fastball away. That's a ball. One ball and no strikes here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Scoreless baseball thrown by the right-hander, Bronson Arroyo. Fly ball. Deep left field going back to the wall is Ballantine. Goodbye. Home run, Lastings Village, and he puts the Pirates on the board. Gets a fastball, middle away, and Lastings Village is swinging for the down. And he hits that one just into about the third or fourth seat, just beyond the 383 sign in left field, and it is now four to one. Here's Brandon Moss. First pitch breaking ball catches the outside corner, and that's a strike. So it has been domination all day long by Bronson Arroyo. Swing and a miss, strike two. He makes one pitch just off the mark, and Lastings Millage, who has done nothing today, makes him pay for it. No balls and two strikes to Brandon Moss. Right-hander Arroyo kicks and deals. Fastball in, that's a ball. After a four-pitch inning, I imagine Arroyo feels like he's just stayed out there. Ground ball to the right side. Phillips picks it up. Flip side arm on Devado. One down. You want your best lawn ever? Then feed your lawn with Scott's Turf Builder Lawn Fertilizer. Turf Builder is 100% nutrition with no filler. So every granule gives your grass the food it needs to grow green and strong. Scott's, the official lawn care company of the Cincinnati Reds. Moss is out four to three. Here's Andy LaRoche. Doubled his last time up. That pitch is outside, and he's fallen behind in the count. Two balls and no strikes.
Right-hander Arroyo kicks and deals. That breaking ball catches the corner, and that's right on the money. Two balls and one strike to Andy LaRoche. Right-hander deals. Popped up and foul off to the right side. Now to play. Two balls and two strikes to Andy LaRoche. As he continues to battle Arroyo here in a two ball, two strike count. LaRoche is hitting 10 consecutive starts now as he fouls this pitch off to the right side. And let's pause for station ID belatedly here on the Cincinnati Reds radio network. Two balls, two strikes to LaRoche. He grounds it up the middle there. Sutton pumps it on the first base, and they got him two down. Looked as though Sutton had a little trouble getting that ball out of his baseball glove, but he makes a strong throw on the first base. Votto gets the stretch out there. They get the out. And with two down, here's Jason Jaramillo. Jaramillo, a switch hitting catcher. He hits from the left side against Arroyo. Fouls this pitch off into the seats. No balls and a strike. Jaramillo has popped up to the catcher, and he has popped up to Brandon Phillips, so he's yet to get a ball out of the infield. And I'm sure Arroyo would like to keep it the same. Here comes that pitch. It's on the ground, and it's through the hole on the left field side, finding a spot where nobody's at. You're talking about a seeing-eye single? Well, that was one of them. They sit between Roland and the shortstop Sutton for the second hit of the inning. And that's a two-out single with Luis Cruz coming to the plate. He'll hit from the right side. Cruz singled his first time up and then hit back to the pitcher, Arroyo, in the fifth. Two down in the inning. Breaking ball left way inside as he spins around Luis Cruz. Pirates have action in their bullpen. Reds do not. Fly ball, center field. Actually, yes, they do. Underneath it is Tavares. He'll make the catch, and that's it for the Pirates here in the seventh. But they finally jump on the board with a home run by Lastings Village, his third of the year. And it is four to one as we head to the eighth on the Cincinnati Bell Reds Radio Network. Six spot as Andy LaRoche is part of a double switch bringing on Neil Walker. He'll be in the number nine spot and pitting, pinch hitting for the Reds will be Juan Francisco as he hits for Bronson Arroyo and back for the play by play. Here's Marty. Thank you, Jeff. Francisco, who's had uh, two opportunities to pinch hit in the series. And he's had hits on both occasions, one of them on Tuesday night, a single that knocked in a run. So he settles in to hit off the right-hander, Steven Jackson. And from the windup, he sends it plateward, and this is lined over third and down the left field line with a foul ball. How close was that one? On back to the plate comes Francisco, down a strike. Charlie Morton went seven innings, allowed six hits, four runs earned. He walked two and struck out three. And Dusty Baker will obviously rely on his bullpen for the remainder of this game. Hopefully no more than six outs. After another outstanding outing by Bronson Arroyo. 
Well, Francisco back in the box. And the windup and the pitch. And it misses outside a ball. Arroyo will end the day with an earned run average of 3.95. And that is, again, an amazing turnaround. Pass ball high, two balls and two, two balls and one strike. I don't think you could have ever thought that he would have been able to do that. Not a I mean, chance. This is 12 consecutive quality starts. 2-1 mm-hmm. pitch. That's a, Actually, that's not doing it justice. I know. Quality starts, six innings or more, three runs or less. He's, he's had one. 12 straight starts in which he's pitched seven innings or more. And given up hardly anything. Yeah. Two and two on Francisco. Now the question is, with the off day Monday, who will get an extra start, or will there ever be anyone who gets an extra start? There's a swing and a miss, and Francisco out on strikes. If they don't skip over anybody, Bronson is slated to get only one more start. Today's Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. And if they keep everybody in rotation, he would not start until Wednesday, which means that would be his last start of the year. If they scratch somebody, then chances are that's not going to happen. Right, because right now they're on about as, what is it, a six-man rotation? Seems like it, yeah. Here's a line drive in the left field, and that's a base hit. That ball hit hard by Willie Tavares, who's had a good return today. Two hits. And he smoked that ball by the third baseman, Neil Walker. And he's aboard with one out for Drew Sutton. Well, I guess these rehab stints are overrated. I guess. Hernandez comes in there and gets a couple of hits on his first ball game with no rehab. Tavares does the same today. Sutton has walked. He's doubled in a run. He's flied out to left. Tavares taking the lead as Jackson comes set and steps off. Tavares, 25 stolen bases in 31 attempts. In fact, he and Brandon Phillips are tied for the club lead. Now the hole by the right-hander in the pitch, and he went around on the pitch. He did try to check his swing and couldn't do it 0-1. Hits have been at a premium today, and that's something we could not say the first two games. <laughs> Reds had a total of 30 hits in the first two encounters in this series. They've been checked today on seven hits, but they have a four to one lead. Step off by Steven Jackson, who's very concerned about the possibility that Willie Tavares might be on the move. And he gets a sign again and comes with the 0-1 pitch, or Willie. He holds, he holds, and now he steps off again. That's got to be coming from the dugout. Got to be. Well, if he does it again, we'll boo the dugout. (laughs) Come on, throw the ball. Here it is. And a swing and a miss. So many times you get signs from the dugout, and the last thing that you want to do is to hold the ball for five seconds and then step off or pick to first five times in a row because you're given the sign. You look in, and they give you the thumb over there to first base, and you're like, oh. It's a two strikes and nothing count, and now he'll throw to first base. Reds runs coming, all of them, in the third inning when they sent eight men to the plate. And the Pirates getting their first run of the game in the seventh on the home run by Lastings Millage. Jackson stretches and pitches and a swing and a miss, and that's all for Drew Sutton. He strikes him out on three pitches. And now we'll face Joey Votto, who's had one hit today, and that a big one, a two-run double in the third inning. 15,892 turnout for today's Titanic struggle. 15,892. The 
Dusty will be dipping into his bullpen in the bottom of the inning. In all likelihood, it'll be Nick Massett. There's a throw on to first. Time call now. Jaramillo is going to go to the mound and talk with Steven Jackson before he starts work against the Reds' first baseman. Meeting is over. The catcher back behind the plate. Why would you be letting him down right now? He's a clown. Because you were supposed to wake him up? He told me he wasn't going. <laughs> Here's the stretch in the pitch. And a swing and a miss. Jim Day, of course, not working today. No TV back home. And he's sitting over in the empty TV booth to our left. Really should have been taking a little nap. That's what I told him. He didn't want to do it. Guy runs the streets all hours of the morning. I mean, <laughs> you, you get your chance, you take a nap if you can. There's a throw to first. If he was running the streets in this town last night, he was fighting security. He'd have been it. shot on sight oh, somewhere. He'd be toast. <laughs> he wouldn't be up here. And boys, we saw walking back last night, they weren't getting around. Up high for a ball. You're packing some serious artillery, these folks. You couldn't even get a quarter pounder with cheese. No. I'm sorry, sir. You're going to step away from the golden arches. <laughs> but I just wanted a quarter. I'm sorry, sir. Would you please move away? One ball and one strike on Joey Votto. And the ball outside, two and one. It's like the commercial for Bill Terra. But I just wanted a corner pass. <laughs> <laughs> Willie Tavares shown no inclination at all to try and steal a base. But Jackson continues to pay a lot of attention. Now the pitch. And that's grounded towards second. The pick and the throw by Delwyn Young to first. And we go to the bottom of the eight. 4 1 Reds on the Cincinnati Bell Reds Radio Network. We invite you to visit the official online shop of the Reds, and you can do it at Reds.com. Browse the largest selection of authentic team gear, including clubhouse caps and T-shirts, jerseys, collectibles, and more. Get your team gear straight from the source. Shop Reds.com. Changes? Well, on the mound is Nick Massett. At shortstop is Paul Yanish. And in right field, Jay Bruce. Yanish will bat second. Bruce will bat number seven in the batting order and Massett of course batting in the nine spot he goes to work on Neil Walker part of a double switch in the top of the inning and he fouls it back again the line on Arroyo seven innings five hits and a run he walked one and struck out four dropping his earned run average to 3.95 as a result of his work on the mound today sitting in that dugout hopeful that Massett in the eighth, Cordero in the ninth can take care of business. And he will leave town with his 14th win. Swing and a miss. Walker behind. No balls and two strikes. Got Arthur Rhodes warming in the bullpen. Now the pitch. And a strikeout swinging, and that takes care of Neil Walker, and he goes down on three pitches. So now Andrew McCutcheon will step in over two with a walk. We're pleased to say that Duke Energy is using his partnership with the Reds to promote ways we can all use energy more efficiently. Visit DukeEnergy.com slash save now to learn more. and probably his last attempt at extending the 10-game hitting streak, and he takes a strike on the outside edge. That one's strike two call. 
He has not has an, had an easy go at it today facing two pitchers with um, totally different stuff, I should say. Yeah. And the pitch. And the fastball is up and away. One and two, the count on McCutcheon. Walked in the first, fly to left in the third, fly to right in the sixth inning. Again, Jay Bruce at right, Paul Giannis at shortstop. And this is fouled back to the screen. I would imagine they're getting Arthur Rhodes ready for Garrett Jones if it comes to that. If Massett can retire the side in order, his services would not be needed. They would go to Cordero then in the ninth inning. The wind and the pitch, and he struck him out Ooh, swinging and made goodness. him chase a serious eater. Two down in the inning. That ball was in the mid. Mm -hmm. And here's Delwin Young. Over three, the switch hitting second baseman. I think Massett likes this relieving stuff. That big adrenaline rush when that phone rings. And come on, baby. Shallow at third base. Scott Rowland. And Young takes a first pitch strike. He retires Delwyn Young. We would expect to see Arthur Rhodes sit down. And very shortly thereafter, Francisco Cordero would get up to begin throwing. Here's a foul down the left field line. The count's two strikes. <laughs> Trying to retire him in order for what would be the third time today. And he has him right where he wants him as he turns it loose. And a ground ball pulled wide at first, backhanded by Votto. Flip it on to Massett, and we go to the top of the ninth. Reds over the Pirates, 4-1 on the Cincinnati Bell Reds Radio Network. Saturday, the Reds Hall of Fame takes you behind the scenes at the ballpark with the Hall Access Baseball Experience. Be part of an exclusive insider tour of the home of the Reds, including stops in the clubhouse, batting cages, scoreboard room, press box. Along the way, you'll meet Reds Hall of Famers and learn the inner workings of baseball from George Foster. Purchase tickets now by calling 513-765-7924 or visit Reds.com. We're in the ninth, and Brandon Phillips is hacking it. Steven Jackson's first pitch and pulls it foul. Phillips has had two hits and three times up and a run batted in his 95th RBI of the year. And the pitch and the check swing foul ball and the counts 0 2. Francisco Cordero as expected. Heating up in the bullpen, getting ready to face the likes of Jones and Millage and Moss. Lineup of Pirate batters in the home half of inning number nine. He'll be looking for his 39th save of the season. Here's a pitch. That's in the air. Headed toward shallow right. Going out as Young. Coming on as Moss. And Moss will make the catch. And the batter will be Scott Rowland. Oh, for three on the day. Jay Bruce will get an at bat. He's waiting on deck after replacing Johnny Gomes in right field in the bottom of the eighth inning. First pitch is low, ball one.
swing and a foul over toward the Pirate dugout. You know, this season offensively did not go, obviously, as well as Jay Bruce would have liked it to. But up until the time that he broke his wrist, he was as good as any center, any right fielder in the game. I mean, his defense was primo. Yeah. 1-1 one, one pitch, high and inside a ball. Well, he's going to go to the Dominican League and play for one month. I think leave. that's a great idea. I really do. Well, it's a, a, a move born out of necessity. There's a call strike. I think all things being equal, I don't think anybody wants to go down there and play in the wintertime. But he's got something to prove. I mean, he's going to spring training, as he said, Yesterday, with a mindset that I am the right fielder on this ball club, but at the same time, he qualified it by saying, I know they're not going to just hand it to me. There's a swing and a miss. Third strikeout for Steven Jackson. He goes to work on Jay Bruce. And again, we look at our Cincinnati Bell trivia question. Born in Cincinnati. On this day in 1921, this player is one of only two Reds to hit a homer in his first big league plate appearance. Clyde Vollmer, Ted Tapp, or Herman Wiemeyer, you said Clyde Vollmer. I did. As did the Hall of Famer Hal McCoy, and both of you are right. <laughs> Three for four and heading to Houston. Clyde Vollmer was born in Cincinnati on September the 24th, 1921. He homered in his first big league plate appearance on May the 31st. 1942. Ted Tapp in 1950 is the only other red to do so. One oh. ball and one strike. That'd be big to finish. Mm-hmm. Three, three for four, five for six, six for seven, seven for eight. I can finish. What are you now? Three for four. After today? Mm-hmm. That's pretty good. For me, that's real good. Your math is not too good. You're talking about on the road trip? Yeah. Oh, okay. Sure. Ground ball to shortstop. There's Bruce. And here's the throw on to first to get him and end the inning. So Steven Jackson, one, two, three, the Reds in the ninth. And now the Reds look to Cordero to get it done. Middle of the inning, nine, four, one Reds on the Cincinnati Bell Reds Radio Network. We'll pause one more time for identification on the Cincinnati Bell Reds Radio Network. Bottom of the ninth inning, Pirates turn to bat down by three, and they face a big guy, right-hander Francisco Cordero. Face Garrett Jones, who has struck out twice, sandwiched around a base hit. 38 saves. He briefly led the league when he picked up his 38th, but since that time, Heath Bell has chalked up three and now leads him 40 to 38. First pitch on the way, and that's a strike to the left handed batting Garrett Jones. Bell of San Diego with 40, Cordero 38, Ryan Franklin of the Cardinals 37. They are the top three in the National League. Pitches down for a ball. Ryan Wilson of the Giants with 36. Jonathan Broxton of L.A. Trevor Hoffman of Milwaukee with 35 apiece. One ball and one strike. Here's a stretch by Cordero and in with a pitch. Swing and a foul. Dick Massett, perfect eighth inning, and picks up a couple of strikeouts along the way. He looked pretty good. Yes, he did. It's a nice combo that the Reds have working now in those last couple of innings. Pitch is just low for a ball. You got to throw Arthur Rhodes into the mix. That's what I mean. That, that combo oh, yeah. with, with Rhodes and Massett. Cordero, where you uh, got lefties coming in. What's that? That's three. I'm talking about combo of innings, the last two innings. Oh, I got gotcha. you. Here's a pitch. Now he's gone three and two after being ahead in the count. Three 
three and two and Cordero sights aside from Hannigan. Here comes a payoff pitch and up. Garrett Jones says he's taken too long and steps away. Here's a pitch. And a late swing, but he makes contact and hits it foul into the seats down the left field line is Jones. I think any time for any manager where you have three pitchers that can pitch in any in any role in those last two innings, well, it's got to make you feel comfortable. And that's basically what Dusty's got at this point. Yep. He walked him. Not a good start for Francisco Cordero, especially when he jumped out ahead in the count. There's a guy who so far today has kept the Pirates from being shut out. Matthews Miller with a home run over the sea. Ball in left center back in the seventh inning. His third home run of the season. Outside, one ball, no strikes. Well, this is the point in time where you have to climb back on the horse after the last save opportunity didn't quite go Cordero's way. That was a disaster. You just got to come back and come get him. And he can't throw a strike. And this was part of his problem the other night when he melted down against the Florida Marlins at home. Lose this guy, all of a sudden you got the tie and run at the plate with nobody out. And it's Brandon Moss. Mm -hmm. And there's a strike, two and one. And Dusty and I talked about the fact that since the 23rd of August, this team tied with the Yankees at 20 wins and 10 losses for the second best record in Major League Baseball over that period of time. Here's a foul ball next to the Red Sox who are 20 and 9 and and you think back uh, on the games that should have been won and that game we mentioned just a moment ago against the Marlins the other night at home is one of them and then the games that they could have won against the Colorado Rockies and did so a 20 and 10 record outstanding over the last 30 games but boy it could have been even better than that here's a 2 2 pitch. And a ground ball back to the mound. He throws to the shortstop, and he throws to first for the double play. That ball got on top of Cordero, I mean, right now. And he fielded that ball like he was rolling out of bed and started a 1-6-3 double play. That's a great play by Paul Yonish because Garrett Jones is a big man, and he was right on top of Yonish. Yonish had to pick it up off of his shoe tops. And as soon as he stood up, here comes Jones right at him. So just like that, the Pirates are down to their final out. Here's Brandon Moss. There's an out away from sweeping the three-game series here in Pittsburgh and continuing to play well here in the last month of the season. Call strike. Big right hander turns it loose and a swing and a miss. The counts 0 and 2. The lemonade from Minute Maid Park in downtown Houston tomorrow night. 805 first pitch. Hour earlier on Saturday night and then a 205 start on Sunday. All those times are Cincinnati times. Here's the pitch. And it's low and inside a ball. You were talking about records, Marty. You look back at April, you look back at May, how well this club pitched. You look at September and how well this club has pitched. It's a big key. Yep. Or rather Cordero hoping this next pitch he throws will be his last one. But it's high and the counts two and two. And Domit waiting in the on deck circle. 
Hoping to get a nat bat. And he will. A line drive into right center. That ball was stung by Moss. Jay Bruce over there to make the pick up. And the ninth inning continues. And now Domit will bat for pitcher Steven Jackson. Now that double play really looms large. Oh, oh, oh. Domit behind the plate in each of the first two games. Getting a day off today from the lineup. Coming on now to pinch it for Steven Jackson with two down. And the pitch. And that's a strike. Still needing an out to go here to nail this baby down. Vado playing behind Moss at first base and Doma taking in there strike two. Base hit by Moss, the sixth hit of the game, or one less than the Reds have collected. Arroyo in the driver, rather Cordero here in the driver's seat, delivers and a swing and a soft looping liner, and that drops for a base hit. In the left field, a little flare. You could have caught with your bare hands, but a credit to Ryan Dolman, he just punched that ball over the infield on the left side, and now Cordero having trouble closing the door here, back-to-back -back two out hits, and despite the double play, Earlier in the inning, they had the tying run at the plate and Jason Jaramillo. Domit's backside was in the red dugout over on the first base side and he just flipped the bat out there. Jaramillo's one for three at a single in the seventh inning. And now he backs away as Cordero stretches on the mound and the pirate bullpen now starting to get busy again. Pittsburgh trying a ninth inning rally. They've had a walk and two hits. Fastball high, one ball and no strikes. Ramon Vasquez has moved out into the on deck circle for Luis Cruz. Brandon Moss at second base. Ryan Doman at first. Two men out. One ball and no strikes. A left handed batter swinging and fouling it off. One and one. Aramillo, a 259 batter with runners in scoring position. Cordero, as he always does, bending low at the waist to get the sign. Now sets for the 1 1 pitch. Let's it fly and misses badly. High and outside, two balls in one strike. Reds four, the Pirates one. Jaramillo trying to extend the inning. Cordero trying to end the game. That's strike two call, and he's even at two and two. Backdoor breaking ball. It just does catch the corner. Two balls, two strikes, two on, two out. The whole ninth inning here in Pittsburgh. Aramillo waiting with a bat cock tie, and he swings and fouls. Foul that ball right out of the mitt. And yes, Ryan Hannigan. Yes, he did. This inning began with a walk to Garrett Jones, then came the hard smash back through the middle. And Cordero flagged down to begin a 1 6 3 double play. But Brandon Moss singled into right center, and Ryan Dolmet as a pinch hitter with an 0 2 count just flicked one into left field to bring us up to where we are right now. Jaramillo strikes out swinging, and this one belongs to the Reds. They threaten, but that's the extent of it, and the Reds complete a three game series sweep here in Pittsburgh, winning the wrap up today 4 to 1. Back in a moment. 